Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video I am going to draw a realistic dark ear. This handsome boy is my current art project. His name is Rex and he is a beautiful German Shepherd. I hope you learn from this video and enjoy it as well. So grab your tools and let's get started. One of the materials I am going to use is the pen pastel, a white and a black one. They are compressed pastel pigments stored in a tiny rounded container. I love to use them as a base layer in combination with color pencils. This is the tool I am going to use the most in this tutorial. It is a black pencil from Faber-Castell Polychromos. These are oil based pencils with hard leads ideal for details like fur. The blue tool is a pencil extender which allows you to use your tiny pencils instead of throwing them away. The Caran d'Ache and Uni Posca are two of my favorite white pencils for adding highlights. They are opaque and show up on a dark area. To apply the pen pastel I am going to use this soft tool applicator. These are special made for applying this kind of pigment. They are quite pricey but they are great quality and come in multiple sizes and shapes. A more affordable option for the soft tool is this cheap eyeshadow applicator. Most people hate them but I love them. They don't eat up the pigment and don't break easily when applied on a smooth paper. If you use a rough paper such as pastel matte, I am quite sure they will get damaged after a few applications. Just give them a try and you'll be surprised. Another everyday product which can be used as a tool is the makeup brush. They have hard bristles ideal for blending out graphite or black pencils. My all time favorite eraser is this one called Tombow Mono Zero Eraser. It has a fine tip perfect to create highlights in small areas. My go to paper for detailed drawings is the Stratmore Bristol 300 series. It is a smooth paper with almost no texture. Most people can't combine it with pen pastel as I will do in this tutorial but I will show you later on how to make it work out. To blacken the shades I use the black pen pastel pad and the soft tool applicator. This is done to make sure everything is placed correctly and that the proportions and distances are accurate. As I mentioned before, lots of people can't understand how it's possible to add color pencils on top of pen pastel using this smooth paper. The main reason of failure is adding too much pigment from the beginning. As with any kind of paper, when the tooth is filled up too much, there is no more space for extra pigment on top Hence this problem arises. The simplest way to avoid that is by building up the amount of pigment added on the paper. As you can see my demonstration, the tooth of the paper can still be seen through the pastel layers. This is a good sign as the paper still has room for details to be added on with the color pencils later. When you feel that the paper becomes slippery, the color is very dense and the texture can no longer be seen, this is the surest sign that the paper soft has been completely filled making it impossible to add the pencil on top. So it's best to take your time and add the pigment bit by bit. Now we come to the moment of truth. Let's see if the pencil will adhere over the pen pastel and as you can see it adheres without any problem. I didn't make the base layer as black as possible so that the fur could be seen over not lost in the pen pastel. For such details as fur Try to keep the pencil always sharp. A blunt tip will only result in lines that are very thick, giving the drawing a dull and uneven look, which is why I advise you to always have a sharpener around when working with such fine details. In order to give a more natural look to the ear, I make sure that I draw the fur in the direction of natural growth that can be seen in the reference picture, not from my imagination as it can give an unnatural look to the drawing. Another important aspect to keep in mind when drawing fur is to keep the pencil as close to the tip as possible for better control. I've said it many times in my previous videos but I can't stress this enough. When you want to create a highlight without the help of any other tool, press harder at the beginning of the fur and slowly decrease the pressure towards the end of the stroke. This will ensure a natural highlight. To create some strong highlights, I used the white pencil from Uniposca. This is a must have tool for any animal portraitist as it can be used over a deep dark area as you can see in this ear drawing. One thing to keep in mind is that the dark pigment will catch on the tip of the pencil which can be quickly transferred to a light area of the drawing and smudge it. 
A very important tip to avoid this is to clean the pencil tip after each application. Another option will be to keep rotating the pencil so that you always use the clean side, but I recommend more the previous advice as it is safer. Now as you can see, the result is great and all of this with just a little effort. For the right side of the ear, I apply the same methods as for the left side. This area has shorter fur and doesn't have a such rich black tone. I started by creating overlapping lines by applying very little pressure to avoid a too thick and dark fur effect and then increased the pressure more and more until I reached the desired darkness. It is always good to work from light to dark as there is still time for corrections. If you start from dark to light, you will definitely cover the highlights and everything will look flat, being the opposite of the realism we want to achieve in this video. The middle part of the year for most dogs is light in color, most often pink. Since this drawing is in black and white, the pink color will be a mid-tone gray. Here you can see how much it helps doing the blacking in as a first step of an artwork, as now I know for sure which is the darkest and lightest part of the drawing. To brighten up some areas in the middle of the ear, I used the kneaded eraser. Towards the end, I added a few more fine details to give a more natural look. This is the brightest area of the ear, and I had to take care to apply some very fine movements to avoid covering this part too much and darkening it. My goal was to create a sense of fluffiness in this area. I am being very careful with each pencil stroke applied and work out in advance where they will be placed. This has been my favorite area to work on because it has many textures and the ways the fur grows, plus many highlights. I started by creating a connection between the two small areas. As I mentioned before, I applied a lot of pressure at the beginning of the stroke, lifting the pencil slightly towards the end. This will help a lot in creating a very natural look and a quick highlight. Because in the middle of this area, the fur grows in the direction of 360 degrees, I had to concentrate a lot not to apply some wrong movements, destroying that effect. I didn't rush at all and applied every individual fur carefully, because it's a painstaking process. For maximum precision, I held the pencil as close as possible to the tip. This helped me a lot to apply each strand in the right place. I started drawing them by creating some guidelines to see in which direction the fur grows, then applied more and more pressure. Towards the end, I blended everything out with a makeup brush to create uneven shading, followed by using the kneaded eraser to create some highlights. If I had left the whole area open, it wouldn't have a natural look, which is why I chose to add 3D effects to the area. This is the last piece of fur on this ear. As in the other parts, I ensured that the tip of the pencil is always pointy and that I follow the direction of the fur growth. An inaccurate orientation of the fur can be seen right away and will definitely give the drawing a fake look. We've come to the last part of the ear, which is mostly skin. To blend the whole area, I used the makeup brush. This helped me to create a base layer over which I will add the pencil details later on. To mark the placement of the highlights, I erased a bit of the base layer, followed by adding some dark fur at the edge of the ear. Now we came to an end of the video. I really hope you enjoyed it and you've learned a lot from it. I am posting one time a week and normally graphite, color pencil or pastel related videos. So if you don't want to miss any of those, please hit that subscribe button and the bell button as well to be notified every time a video goes live. And I really hope I'm going to see you in the next one as well. Have a nice day. Bye guys.